right? So let's start off with the cap that Anthony Luke is wearing. If you think about what has happened over the past two weeks, people will focus a lot just on the decision made by, uh, made by you know the pardons board mm. with regards to Najib's discount. But they fail to see, or most people, I would say 90, 95% of people would fail to see that there's a larger political context, uh, you know, in terms of the pressures that have been put under Anthony Lok over the past six months or so. Because before this Najib issue, you remember there was a, a statement made by the MP for Broas, Nge Kuham, Datuk Nge Kuham, mm-hmm. about how you should have uh, Malay, or, sorry, non-Malay appointees uh, into a council that is talking and deciding about Sharia affairs. Yes. Right? And that created a lot of problems, uh, you know, in terms of the perception that non-Malays are actually wanting to interfere, uh, you know, in the Sharia courts. And that, uh, you know, had a lot of backlash, including from UMNO against the DAP. Yeah. Right? So, Nge Kumaham had to apologize. Uh, and Anthony, you know, was facing a lot of pressure from UMNO uh, from that perspective. Right? So, imagine if, let's say, you know, uh, there's this Nick, Nick uh, Elin case in the fed, in the federal court recently, uh, you know, which was appealing against certain decisions or judgments or, or regulatory sort of like um, punishments made by the Sharia courts in Kelantan. Imagine if, let's say, this issue was still an important issue, the Nge Kuham issue, yeah. within the context of this Sharia decision. I mean, oh. the kind of backlash, right? Yes. Can you imagine? Yes, I mean, yes. It's, 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 it would be pretty serious. So that that is that was one big fire that Anthony had to put out, and I think he, you know, largely succeeded. And then, at the same time as this uh, Najib discount was going on, uh, there was another issue that was going on that we'll talk about later. This whole issue of wanting to make the Chinese new villages into some sort of, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, UNESCO heritage site, right? So you know, I mean, uh, Amno Youth and other Malay NGOs came out to to criticized the decision and it was something that uh, Anthony had to sort of like uh, uh, you know try to balance out as well right you you can you imagine the kind of pressures that he's facing you are absolutely right to say that Anthony is a man of few words I think uh, you know even though I think he gives excellent press conferences he conducts himself in a way that's very professional uh, in, in public uh, but uh, he's not somebody who uh, consults widely in the party uh, meaning that he doesn't you know go out and you know, have yam cha mm. uh, with you or with different leaders so that they can he can get a good pulse of what's happening so that you can share with him some of your frustration so that he can maybe use some of your input points to get and seek better strategies and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think this is something uh, that is of concern for, for a few reasons. Uh, at a very basic level, when you do not consult widely, you know, you, you put too much burden on yourself, right? Which is why I actually in my press statement, say, look, the CEC should issue a statement on this. Because if the CEC issues a statement, there are 30 of them there, it can be see, uh, seen as 29 people backing up Anthony. Yeah. Right? Although, in the past, DAP doesn't, doesn't do that as a, as a practice. But, Amno does that. They issue a statement on, on, on the part of the MKT and says that it's a collective decision. And, this is not something that's written in, in the DAP constitution that mm. only the SG can make uh, statements. Right, so when when you have this kind of uh, situation where too much burden is put on an SG who may not consult widely, I think uh, you know you will pressure yourself, you know, and I'm putting myself in Anthony's shoes to make decisions that are much more short term in nature. I don't want to break up this unity government. I don't want to be held responsible if, let's say, Amno does something that would be detrimental to the interests of this mm. government. Right, and 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 this is a very important point because uh, leading on from that, it means that. You don't have a wider, uh, you know, community of leaders where you can get different ideas on how to tackle these issues, mm. right? So, for example, you know, Anthony, instead of saying why, what, what I said as uh, you know, in, in, in the the word he used in Mandarin is fei hua, mm. uh, you know, which says translates into rubbish or nonsense, <laughs> he can actually use me as some sort of a, a you know, a sounding board or, or somebody who can speak out on certain things in ways that the CEC can't speak out on. Right, because I'm not part of the CEC, mm. and you know, like it or not, I have some following. You know, through this podcast, through uh, access to social media and whatnot, and I think most of the time I say things that make sense to the larger public. Mm. Right, so you know, that that kind of strategic thinking on a more holistic level, uh, sad to say, is not happening in the DAP now, and I think 
this is part and parcel of uh, the responsibility of Anthony. Because you have to understand, Peter, just like a CEO, right? No, there's no perfect CEO. There'll be areas where you are, you are strong, right? There'll be areas where you're weaker at. Mm. So Anthony is very strong in terms of keeping party discipline, in terms of uh, being focused on the message, in terms of uh, trying to balance all the different needs of different uh, constituents. But the area where I can say he's the weakest on is in the lack of consultation, uh, larger consultation, sharing of ide- ideas, sharing of strategies among a larger group within the DEP. Right. Doesn't mean that he has to consult with me because I'm not in the CEC. Uh, I do happen to think that I have a bit have a decent strategic head for different things. Maybe not all in politics, but in policy, definitely. Uh, but you know, there are many others that he can uh, consult and talk with. Uh, to, to get a larger picture and also to chart out that strategy. So that is something that is absent. Right.